Hey everybody, welcome to Scott Cooks. I was talking to somebody the other day about buying a foodie. Uh, they said they didn't want no Ninja foodie, it was too small. Uh, they said you can't even get a rack of ribs in it. And I said, ha, watch this. This is a 3.7 pound full rack of pork baby back ribs. We're going to cook that whole thing in the Ninja foodie. Stay tuned to find out how I do it. Step one in your baby back ribs uh, is to find out if it has a membrane on the back or not. Some do, some don't. I'm looking through the package. I think this one does. Uh, and that's going to be the first step. We're going to get this off of here, clean it up, get a super sharp knife, get up under the bone, and we're going to try to peel this membrane all the way off. It's going to take five or ten minutes to do it. Uh, if you do it, your meat uh, pieces will fall apart. They'll be more tender and they're easier to separate. So uh, that's step one. Let's get on that. Do your best. Drain all the juices out of the package. I got this laid out on some paper towels. As you can see, some juices are still dripping here and there. And uh, I do believe that there is a membrane on this. I think I can see it right there. So uh, we're going to get ourselves a knife and see if we can not just uh, peel that thing right off. It might fall into pieces, but we want to get as much of it off as we can. Um, time consuming, but it is an important step. And you might, guys, you might actually find ribs out there that have already had the membranes removed. Uh, I did hear about such a thing, but I've never seen it. Let's get a knife. Now we're going to try a couple different knives here to see which one works better. And I can see that I got lucky. There's a little tear in the membrane already right here. So um, let's see if we can't work with that little tear. So this is a serrated steak knife. I may need to get something a little sharper. So I don't really want to cut into the meat. I just want to get to the... All right, we're going to go back to the corner idea. I'm going to try to peel a piece off and then just peel it. That's the, there it is. We can see if we can get a grip on it. I'm telling you, this is not the easiest thing in the world. So all this is slippery and slimy. So we'll grab a paper towel and we're going to try to grab that membrane and pull. And there it comes. You can see it start to come off right there. Everybody see that? And we want to peel this all the way off the back. And the easiest way is to grip it with something. I'm using a paper towel. And hold down. And there it comes. And you can see it in pieces here. Just take something and give it a little slice. To help it along. And we're going to grip down a little lower. And keep peeling. Oh, see she just broke on us right there. But we want to keep rolling where it's going to roll. That's almost it. A little bit more on this end. Now here it ties together with some of the meat. So it's a little harder at the end, but you can always just come in here and trim it. It's much easier to peel it than it is to cut it. Let me tell you, stuff doesn't cut very good. And that's it. Getting that membrane off is going to make our life a whole lot easier. This is going to get more tender, and these pieces are just going to be able to just be broken apart. That membrane sort of holds the whole thing together. Now, we got to get this in the foodie. And if you see little pieces like this, I just like to come around and just sort of cut them out. So, how are we going to put this thing in the foodie? Are we going to cut this into pieces? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Hang tight. The secret to everything that has to do with a Ninja Foodie is pressure cook. That's why you have a Ninja Foodie. Pressure cook, pressure cook, pressure cook. And we are going to pressure cook these ribs and they are just going to be fall off the bone delicious and because we have a foodie we are also going to crisp them up using the air fryer we're going to put a special sauce on this you are not going to believe what's about to happen 
by the way, I have to mention, this is the eight and a half quart pot. Eight and a half quart. Now that does not give it any extra diameter, but it gives it a little more height. And there you go. That is a rack of ribs. Almost ready for pressure cook. We're gonna do a little more to it first. Hopefully my uh, whiskey drinking viewers will appreciate this. This is Jack Daniels, original barbecue sauce with Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey right in the bottle. I want you to look at the first ingredient and you already know it's going to be good. When that says cane sugar, we're in business. Try to let some of it run in the front and the back if you can. We're going to be using the whole bottle. And that's because we need something to pressure cook with. So we need some liquid in here. And it's okay if it doesn't cover little pieces here and there. Uh, it will definitely cover during the pressure cook operation. So this next step is totally dependent on your sauce. If your sauce is thin, you may not need to do this. If your sauce is super thick like mine, uh, if I try to pressure cook it just like that, it's gonna get a lot of, a lot of splattering. It's not gonna work out so good. So we need to thin that down just a tiny bit, but don't worry, we're gonna save this sauce at the end uh, and get it out of here and then put it back over our ribs later on. So we gotta do something to thin that down. So this is where you guys should probably go read your ingredient list. Uh, I've got a lot of apple cider vinegar already in this particular one. So normally I would put a little apple cider vinegar in it, thin it out a little bit. Uh, in this case, I think I'm just gonna use a little water. Not much. That was uh, maybe a quarter of a cup. But you gotta have a little, just a little thinness. Or, if your sauce, like I said, is already super thin, um, you may not need to add anything. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Let's get this guy under pressure. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Let's go ahead and lower your lid. Now I am using the new Smart Lid, eight and a half quart. Uh, this will work with the old style foodie as well because all we're doing is pressure cooking and doing a little air fry. Make sure you set your release valve here to seal. So depending on your model of foodie, um, these steps will vary, but um, for me, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna use my slider all the way to the left. That's pressure cook for me. If you got the old style, you know what to do. Just put the second lid on and hit pressure. We want it high default and we want 30 minutes. And that's it. Um, once we finish our pressure, we got a few extra steps to do. We'll remove the uh, barbecue sauce, put that into a pan. Uh, we'll get our basket in there. We'll cut up the ribs into smaller pieces lay it out in the basket, pour some of that sauce back on top, and put a little air crisp on them. All right, we are coming down the home stretch here. Those ribs and the sauce, we can smell them all over the house. It's amazing. We've got about one minute left, and we are gonna do a five minute natural pressure release. In other words, we're not gonna do anything for five minutes. We're gonna let it sit, and then we'll release the pressure and move on to the next couple steps. All right. Here we go, a nice big pot of juicy liquid and super tender and uh, ribs, and I know that they're tender. See the white right there, under there? That's the bones showing, and I can see separation between the bones already. So uh, getting this out, it's probably gonna fall apart as I take it apart. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in here with some tongs and stuff, and we're gonna get this uh, over on these platters. Oh yeah, they already fell apart. So this is gonna be easier than I thought, you know? Uh, because they broke apart, they're just kinda of, kind of fit right down on there for me. Oh, this is gonna be so tender. Look at this, the meat is falling off of them. Wow, 
And I'm trying to keep them as intact as I can for the air crisp portion of this. All right, so I get my, uh, my big old silicone mitts back on here. Guys, make sure you get yourself something like this. Very important when you're working with the foodie. This thing is crazy hot, but with these, they never even get warm. So uh, let's pour off some of that juice. Oh yeah, look at that. Now we're certainly not gonna use all of that, but we're gonna use some of it. So you wanna get as much as you can out. We're gonna air fry now. We're gonna rinse this out as well, because if I left that in there and hit the air fryer, uh, we'll probably burn it. So just gonna, not gonna wash it, just gonna give it a quick rinse. Grab your basket, drop it in. Um, scissors, um, knife, whatever you got. We want pieces about this big to go right down in there. Now this is gonna be a little hard. You can see the meat falling off of them already. This is incredibly tender. And uh, <laughs> I don't really need to cut these. They're just sort of disintegrating on me. And we're gonna get a layer or two in here. And I think I'll cut this one more time. Perfect pieces. The bone's practically falling out of that one. So what we've got here in this bowl is of course all of that delicious barbecue sauce plus the juices from the ribs which are going to add even more flavor and we're going to use this right now let me get something to ladle it on there with Coat them pretty good. That's nice. And let's get the next batch in, right on top. Because we're air frying, uh, we can do, we can get away with uh, stacking. You might have seen a recipe I did a while back with the chicken wings. It's very similar to this technique where I stacked the chicken wings in there and did some air frying, and man, they just came out so good. Look at that. Mm. Drop that bad boy right in there. Let's get the last one in. Let's get a lot more sauce going here. I know the sauce looks a little thin. The sauce is filled with sugar, molasses, and other things that'll make it thick. It should give us a nice glaze or coating. I think we're pretty well covered. You know what, let's one more just in case. <laughs> All right, and that's it. Gloves back on, back into the foodie we go. Beautiful. All right, guys, lid down. If you're using the smart lid, go ahead and push it all the way to the right. This will work with the older models as well. You don't, you just don't have the slider. Just make sure you, you know, take your pressure lid away, lower down your other lid, throw that bad boy on air crisp or air fry, or whatever they call it on the old models. This model, it's air fry. Um, 390 is probably going to do it for us. I'm going to put it on 20 minutes. We're only going to need maybe 10. If you watch my videos a lot, you know I usually overestimate because with the foodie, you can just lift the lid and, or just push the power button off. Uh, you know, you're not really locked into this. But anyway, we'll come back and check these in uh, five, six, seven minutes to see how we're doing. Well, let's go ahead and get our first five minute check. We're five minutes in. Oh my, look at that. We don't want to leave this lid open too long, but look at what I'm seeing. Oh my goodness. This is great, guys. I'm thinking maybe five more minutes, maybe three to five more minutes. Fresh from the foodie, an entire rack 
of pork baby back ribs covered and coated and pressure cooked in Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. You've already seen how tender they were, falling apart when I tried to get them out. Let's cut into them, see how we did. First, let's check this bone area right here. Bone falls right out. Let's get a piece of that meat. Look at that, I can just shred it with my fork, guys. Look at that. Well, you probably can't see it because my hand's in the way. I'm just shredding that, shredding that pork. Wow, that is unbelievable. You know what we gotta do now, don't you? Let's take a bite. Can't wait for this. Wow, that was like butter. Just went gone. Very flavorful. Now, obviously, if you guys like a lot more sauce, just hang on to that sauce. You can always just pour a little more on there. You can also put it on the stove and boil it a little bit thicken it even more, or just save some straight from the bottle instead of putting it all in there, and that way you can have a little thicker sauce on the top. I wanted mine like this. I wanted that flavor cooked into them uh, with a little bit of a crisp on the top, and I got it, and it is absolutely perfect. And I want to thank everybody for watching, and whoever that was that told me that, oh, I don't want a foodie because uh, I can't put a rack of ribs in there. Well, ha! Watch this. Thanks, guys.